Hi, this is Justin Taylor at Brainshare 2013. Today we're going to take a look at social access and what it's all about, and to help us understand that, we have our good friend Ben. Thanks a lot, Ben, for being here. You're welcome. So kind of explain to me what this social access thing's about. So social access is about allowing your users or your customers to log into uh, corporate applications or other applications that with a Facebook or other social uh, credentials as well as their e-directory or LDAP username and password. So it makes sense, a couple billion of those out there, right? Right. So this is more for how they can use those at the enterprise level. So can you give us a look? Yes, I will gladly give you a look. So right here we have the uh, main login screen for the social access. What you'll notice is that right along here we've got the username and password, the standard LDAP type of username and password. But along the side we've also got this uh, Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, Yahoo, and Windows Live to be able to log into the application with. What I've done is I've clicked on this little SharePoint system that's set up so that uh, SharePoint can be used against this. I'm going to log into this SharePoint system with my Facebook credentials in this case. So if I come into the Facebook, I've got a username and password here. And these are my standard Facebook credentials that I log into the appliance with, and I'm granted access to the SharePoint system after the uh, is checked against my token, and I can see that I'm logged in as uh, Felstead Systems at Hotmail.com. I've also got a single sign-on to this simple SAML application to kind of show what additional attributes I can pull from Facebook uh, that can be used for at the application side. So as you can see, I can get the email address, the user's full name, the ID, this is his unique ID at Facebook, uh, as well as how he logged in. So in this case, I've got a Facebook SSO yeah, login. I've got one additional, which is the Digital Airlines demo. Now, the difference is, is this one didn't allow you to single sign on because this one specifies that you cannot sign in with a social network to this site. This one only allows you to log in with a username and password that is LDAP. So the user has to have a username and password created. So if I log in as BCF there, I can log get into this system, and you can see that I'm logged in as me, to the site itself. Now, if I were to close the browser and try that from a from the Digital Airlines system first, which is the more specific contract of the two. So if I log in, now again. And one of the nice features that's in this product that's built into it is if the username and password is wrong, I have uh, reCAPTCHA, Google's reCAPTCHA right in there so that when the user logs in, we can prevent a denial of service to say that this is an actual user by popping up the reCAPTCHA and having them type in the reCAPTCHA as well as their password. So let's get a reCAPTCHA I can read. That one looks good. and it checks the reCAPTCHA as well as the password. So, I can now log in and it proves that it's not some bot trying to do it, it's actually a user that read the reCAPTCHA and put it in. Now I showed you that to show you that we also can now log into the simple SAML with the e-directory credentials in this case. We can see that we signed in as eDir SSO, but we didn't get prompted for that because the e-directory also fulfills the social network logins as well. And we can come back to the SharePoint, and I can get logged into the SharePoint system itself. And this is all done through an appliance that uh, is fairly simple to administer. So if we switch over, and now we've shown the end user flows, and we're into the administrator flows of this, to say that these are the identity sources that we come ship with out of the box, Active Directory, eDirectory, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Windows Live, Twitter, Yahoo, a generic SAML2, so if one of these doesn't fit, but the um, site specifies a OAuth2, uh, we can pull this OAuth, generic OAuth2 guy over and say, configure everything we need to there, as well as OpenID. 
kind of a box of Legos. You can either go with the pre-assembled X-Wing fighter or just get... Or just build, build your, your own, own type of thing, yes. Uh, we have syslog down here in reCAPTCHA are, the, are two of the tools we've got. So we spit all the events, all the logins to a syslog server. Uh, through a standard syslog port, and the recapture goes against the e-directory things that are in there. Now, configuring each of these is actually fairly easy, because once you've gone to things like the Facebook side, you can see that Facebook has two things that it gives you after you've created a Facebook app to be able to log in. That's the app ID and the app secret, and you just pull those right out of the Facebook site, paste them into here, and you're off and running, and the site will show that login for the Facebook along the side. It's pretty simple. On the other side, we have the applications themselves. Now, these are all SAML2 enabled applications that uh, will accept a SAML2 post token. So in this case, we've got a digital error. If we come in and configure it, we've got a email. It needs an email address and a full name type of thing. And we've abstracted that out so that you just have to pick those out of the list here. So email is email, and it doesn't matter which of these identity sources it is. You just map it to this email, and email comes across. Also within that, we've got the picking of the identity sources. So like I said, the digital airlines only allows the Eater SSO, so all of these other authentication contracts or types are disassociated, and so he can only log in with the directory to that particular connector. And so that's kind of the overview of the administration portion of it. Well, it looks pretty powerful, Ben. Actually, it's, um, it's very interesting to see how we're actually allowing now for people to use their internet standard kind of credentials they're used to using, Twitter, Facebook, things like that, to get access to enterprise applications. Correct. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to show it to us. You're welcome. This has been Justin Taylor for BrainShare 2013.